Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Minasan, Namaskar and welcome to the class in the second lecture series on Introduction to Japanese Language and Culture. Uh, in our last lesson, we had done expressions and before that, we did particle day. I want to do particle day today with you a little more as to how we are going to use particle day in other ways in the language and to improve conversation. And also, I will uh, do kotowaza with you, which I had promised in your previous class that I will do a kotowaza on ishi, which is tone. So, I have a couple of kotowaza for you. But before that, I also want to do some kanji with you. So, let us see what all kanjis we have here. The kanjis that I am going to do today, we have covered some in our previous lesson and I had also promised you that I would give you some words with these kanjis. These are simple kanjis but have lot of readings. So, let us see what they are. So, there is this one you had done last time which means ue which means up or above and another kanji over here which is like this which is te which means hands. So, when we join the two, what is the word that we get? Jozu, jozu. Now, you have seen one reading over here which is ue and another reading for the same character is jo. So, you can figure out from the kanji itself where you are very good at something. You can do something very well above the others. So, the meaning of Jozu is skilled to be good at something. Jozu. Now, there is a sentence for you. Mira wa Nihongo ga Jozu desu. Mira is good at Japanese. So, now you will see that with Jozu, as we have done with suki, which is to like or like, ga is used. Why? Because you are emphasizing that somebody or I myself can do something well. Of course, you never say that you are good at something if you are a Japanese. So, please remember even if you are good at something, you will generally not say that, oh, I am very good at something and proudly uh, proclaim that uh, I can do this well. Let others say it, that is better, that is more humble. Then, okasan wa ryori ga jozu desu. For others, using jozu is very good, but for yourself, try not to use jozu. Okasan is mother, ryori is food, cuisine actually. Okasan wa ryori ga jozu desu. She can make very good food. She is good at cooking. Now, there is another one. Again, you have this kanji over here and a new kanji which is shi. So, jo shi. Joshi means boss. Okay? We will only concentrate on the first part and do this part some other time. Or maybe when we are comparing kanjis, later we can do it. So, joshi is senior or boss. Then, another meaning of this character is to give. And what is the verb that you have done? Ageru. 
age mas. So, watashi wa haha ni kaban o age mashita. I gave my mother a bag. And then agaru is also there. To rise, to go up, to step up. And what is the phrase that you have done? Dozo, dozo o agari kuda sai. Please come in. A polite way of inviting someone inside in your house. Agaru. And also it means to rise. For example, the level of the river is rising or it has risen or the prices have risen. So, that is another way of using this word and the kanji is of ue. Just for information, this three stroke character has a lot of readings, lot of meanings. It is a simple character but lot of meanings. So, gasurin dai ga raishu kara agarimasu. So, the petrol prices will rise from next week or kaba no sui ga agatte imasu. The level of the river is rising, agatte imasu, it is rising. So, that is how you will use it also. Now, there is te again, we did te over here, of course, did not use it much in a word. So, we are going to do it here now. Two readings are there, te and shu. Tetsu dau. Te su dau. And what does it mean? To help. Tetsu dai ka. Shall I help you? This is a very polite way of asking someone do they need any help? So now you have. Okasan wa Nihongo ga jōzu desu. How will you write Nihongo? So, Nihon you have done, Ni and Hon. How will you write Go? So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and then you have another Kuchi over here. So, I will write it down. Nihon go. So, it is a how many stroke character? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 and 14. It is a 14 stroke character. Now, why I am writing it over here for you is you should know how to write Nihongo as that is exactly what we are doing. So, Nihon and go. Please remember this kanji. And then you have Jozu over here, which is skilled at or good at. Now, there is this word tegami, which you have done a number of times. You know the word te ga and ni. But the kanji is new. So, the first kanji is of te. Concentrate over here and you will be able to remember this. We will do the gami part later. Now, watashi wa mainichi tegami o kakimasu. I write a letter every day. Or, okasan ni tegami o okurimashita ka? Intonation is rising because you are asking a question. Over here, probably mira. So, mira, okasan ni tegami o okurimashita ka? Have you sent the letter to your mother? Why your mother? Because it is okasan. Someone else's mother will always be referred as Okasan. Then Tebukuro. This also you know. Te bukuro. Tebukuro means gloves. And again, concentrate only on this part and how to write it. I have written it a number of times like this. So please. Watashi no tebukuro wa. 
akai desu. My tebukuro is red. My gloves are red. And tekubi. Now what is tekubi? Tekubi is a new word. Kubi means neck and tekubi would be your wrist. Neck of the hand would be your wrist. So sometimes these kanjis are very helpful. You can easily visualize what is being said and what the meaning is. And there is another word which you have also read a number of times. So what is it? O te arai. O te arai means what? Means washroom. Te arai. Te is hand and arai is to wash. So te arai. Two new words over here. Absolutely new. Te kubi and te bukuro. You can learn these. Remember the kanji for te. Now I had also promised you that I am going to tell you about kotowaza. So what is kotowaza? We all know kotowaza is um, proverbs and uh, phrases and sayings in English, idioms and phrases. Well, kotowaza is a single word in Japanese, but for our own uh, understanding, we know that koto means a word or something that you say and waza in Japanese, if we separate these two, means technique, method, use something to do something, okay, that is waza. So intelligently you try a technique and achieve something. So now over here with koto waza, as I told you, koto is word or something you say, what can you understand from here? Very simple, kotowaza is something that you say very smartly, very intelligently and convey something in very short, okay. So using words to say something intelligently is kotowaza, a saying or an idiom. So I am going to do to um, kotowaza today with you. I had said I would use ishi in the kotowaza. So there are two very uh, popular uh, kotowaza here that I am going to take up. So please learn those, use them in your uh, sentences and it will make your language better. Also by learning these kotowazas, you uh, learn about the culture, about the people, what they think, how they interact. Mm, what uh, what their um, living uh, method style uh, is and uh, how they interact amongst themselves about their customs about their beliefs everything can be understood from kotowaza of a country or of of that locality so let us see what we have here today it's a very popular kotowaza isseki nicho and uh, what does it mean? Seki is ishi and cho is a bird. So we know the English idiom over here, which is killing two birds with one stone. So you can see this small boy trying to kill two birds over here. It's an interesting kotowaza. We understand it in English also. When when we try to do two things at one time, basically doing something and achieving something else as well at that time, solving maybe two problems at the same time. So it's, it's something very smart, perform one activity and achieve the other. So you can see over here, kids are playing as well, they are uh, interacting with each other and also taking care of themselves in one way we could say by doing undo which is exercise. In a similar manner here in this picture also you can see a family doing exercises and spending quality time together. So isseki nicho. And then I want to do the kanji for cho which is bird and in Japanese it is tori. So you can see the tori over here how the kanji has come into being like this from the shape of the tori 
and I will make the character for you 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and 11. That is how it is made. It is an 11 stroke stroke character and you can see very clearly how the strokes have the lines have come into being that is the pictogram or the ideogram of Tori. One word I can tell you which a lot of you would have used in your sentences Tori Niku which is chicken meat. Then what is this? This is Hane which is wings and it is made like this and like this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 and you can see the wings are right here and the bird is there so that is how it is made and it is honey. Simple character and this character is also used this small kanji is also used in other kanjis and we just might do that kanji also later. Okay, it is right here. So, we have done yobi, getsu yobi. So, how is it made? See, 1, 2, 3, over here and b. Now, what does it mean? Yobi, you already know, it means day, days of the week. So, getsu yobi, kayobi, su yobi, moku yobi, kin yobi, you have done it earlier. I am giving you the kanji now. And what is the meaning? How did this kanji come into being? Well, the picture for the pictogram that I could find was the sun. And that is the, that's the thought behind this character. The sun travels from here to here, that is in a day, on the wings of a fat bird. So, wings are over here, sun is over here and the fat bird is shown by this. So, these three things you can see this, this and this. So, the sun travels from one place to another that is from morning till evening and sets over here and travels how? On the wings, on the wings of a fat bird. So, that is how Yobi has come into being. It is an 18 stroke character. And this reading for Nichi is B. B. Now, these are two pictograms which I could find for Hayashi, Hayashi and Mori, Hayashi and Mori. We have done these two characters earlier. This is a big, large jungle forest and this is a small forest. So, just these characters for you to remember the pictogram, it is always better. This is the pictogram you can see. Now, there is another kotowaza that I wanted to tell you. We all try a lot of things and uh, then sort of uh, our interest is, we lose our interest and uh, we sort of leave it do not want to go any further. There could be n number of reasons for it. Maybe you do not have the time or you do not have the desire, but we generally do that. But we also know that with patience, you can achieve a lot of things. Perseverance always pays. So, the Japanese believe in this a lot. <coughs> they, they have this kotowaza which says that if you sit in a place for a long time, even a stone as hard, something as hard as a stone will also melt. So, the kotowaza that I am going to do today is very, very important and why it is important is that we are doing Japanese and Japanese being a little difficult for us foreigners, we need to be very patient, we need to persevere, we need to keep going at it and not lose hope and definitely after a while will be able to achieve what we want. So, let us see what the kotowaza is. So, ishi no ue ni mo sannen. 
So, you can understand from here how the Japanese feel that you will not achieve anything in a day, nothing is happening in a day. Similarly for us as well, we are not learning Japanese in a day, we cannot do that. And so, you need to be hard working, you need to just be at it all the time, perseverance is there and also patience is very, very important. You have to keep working at it every day and definitely within some time. Three years is uh, a period that they have given. Of course, for some things, three years is not enough, but well, that's the period they say and you can achieve. After a while, even a hard stone like this will start becoming warm, that you will start getting results is what it means. So now you will see that in this kotowaza, the reading is ishi. And in the previous kotowaza, the reading was seki for stone. Ishi no ue ni mo sanen. Even something as hard as a stone will also start warming up, will get warm and you will start getting results is what it means. So all of you, please don't lose hope. Gradually, we will all learn Japanese and start speaking fluently. So, the meaning is right here. Sitting on a stone for three years, perseverance overcomes all things. And this is the literal meaning of this kotowaza. Now, I also want to do these three characters with you. This character you have studied earlier is migi. Migi, which is right. Ishi is very similar to Migi. Now, the only difference is that you make it from here. The line does not cross this horizontal line. Please remember it is like this. This is Ishi stone. And now, this is Hidari. This also you have done. Well, the thought behind the pictogram is that you hold the ruler in your left hand and draw a line. That is how it has come into being. And over here, you eat with your right hand. Hold chopsticks with your right hand. So, that is how these characters have come into being. If I can find a picture, I will definitely try to put it for you so that you can learn it easily. So now we had a passage in lesson 10 and I have converted the passage into a kaiva. You can practice doing this with other passages which are in lesson 1 and lesson 2 and I think it will help you to remember question words. That is the reason we are going to look at the kaiva. So you can see there are a lot of question words over here. Rao san mai nichi nanji ni uchi wo demasu ka? Deru is the verb. What time do you leave home? Shawa wo abite kara after I have taken a shower. Shichiji ni demas I leave. Mai nichi nande kaisha e ikimasu ka? So as I told you earlier, nande is used in two ways as how and why. I have already done the explanation, so you can look at that. Jibun no bike de ikimasu. Jibun is myself, my bike. So, another question is, hitori de ikimasu ka? Do you go alone? Iie, tomodachi to issho ni ikimasu. Nanji ni kaerimasu ka? Nanji ni kaerimasu ka? Again, you have a question word here. Rokuji goro around about this time. And now, bangohan wa doushimasu ka? What are you going to do about bangohan, which is dinner? Or what do you do about ban gohan? Uchi de tsukurimasu ka? Do you make it at home? So he says, hai, futari de, the two of us together tsukurimasu. He could have also said, hai, watashi to tomodachi wa futari de tsukurimasu. So you can remove this as it is direct conversation because he goes with his friend tomodachi to issho ni ikimasu. Dakara futari de tsukurimasu. 
we make it together. So, shite gohan no tabete terebi o mite juji goro nemas. This part also we have done. I do this and I do this and then I sleep. So, this is in your script and a number of kanjis you have done. You can check out which kanjis you can read and understand and write. Now, using these question words like nan, nanji, itsu, nande, do, ikaga, they will help in conversation. They will help you talk and do conversation better because uh, you will be able to frame sentences very, very quickly and you can inquire and answer. So, let us see all the question words that are there. O namae wa nan desu ka? You already know what is your name. Nan nin imasu ka? So, how many people are there? Nani o tabemasu ka? Or nani o tabetai desu ka? So, what do you want to eat? And then, nani ga i desu ka? What would you prefer? So, you can see nan and nani both mean what and are used for asking questions. Nanji ga ii desu ka? What time is a good time for you? Nani iro ga suki desu ka? So, again as I told you earlier, suki will always take particle ga for emphasis. Then, nan desu, nan desu ka? What is the matter? Or nan desho ka? What do you want or what is the matter? If you use this, then it is more blunt, more direct and if you say the show ka, well it is more polite and because you do not know what the person wants, that is why you would say nan de show ka. What is the matter? What do you want or what should I do for you? Now, though it is not a rule I told you earlier, nan is generally used with numbers, nan nin, nan nichi, nan yobi, nan gatsu, nan ji. And nani is used more with verbs and adjectives. So, this is not a rule, but yes, it will be easy for you to understand where nan is used and where nani is used. Now, nan no hanashi desu ka? What are you talking about? Nan no regarding or about. Now, nani ka tabemasu ka? Will you have some? So, nanika is thing. There are others also. Doko e ikimasu ka? Doko is where as you know. Then, dare ni aimasu ka? Who are you going to meet? For people, dare to issho ni ikimasu ka? Whom are you going with? Then, dore o kaimasu ka? So, dore is used for things and dore choice between two or three things. So, you are actually pointing at something and asking your uh, listener which one are you going to buy. Dono shatsu ga ii desu ka? Same thing, dono is also used for things, but dono is used for people as well plus you have dono noun plus wa. Over here we have ga. So, dono shatsu ga ii desu ka? Which shirts is better? Now, again it is choice. Kore wa ikura desu ka? Of course, ikura is another question word which is used for price. Itsu ikimasu ka? Is when and this is price. Please remember itsu ikimasu ka? When are you going? Now, another polite question word is oterai wa dochira desu ka? So, when you ask somebody then dochira for where? Okuni wa dochira desu ka? Okuni wa dochira desu ka? Now, kaisha wa kaisha wa dochira desu ka? This means, where are you working? This is an exception, not where is your kaisha. Where are you 
working. So, name of your Kaisha is what is required, not place. Please remember this is an exception. Dochira is polite for doko. Now, ringo wa ikutsu arimasu ka? So, how many? How many? These are all question words and I am giving it to you over here so that you can see different uh, sentences and use them in your own conversation. Then we were doing particle they in our last lesson. Let us see how else we can use particle they. It can be used to give reason also for not doing a certain activity. So, let us see the example. Kino netsu de momoku wa gakko o yasumi mashita. She did not go to school because of netsu which is fever. So, you have done different days. Kino netsu de momoku wa gakko o yasumi mashita. Netsu which is fever. Instead of netsu, you can also use other words, other nouns and give reason for not doing a certain activity. For example, watashi wa kaze de gakko o yasumimashita or watashi wa byoki de kino kaisha e ikimasen deshita or chicken de watashi wa ashita no party e ikimasen. Sumimasen kedo chicken de watashi wa party e ikimasen. Because of chicken, I will not go to the party tomorrow. So, as you can replace netsu with other words, you can also replace this time expression with ashita or kino or senshu or raigetsu and say what you want to say. So, with they you can give reason for not doing a certain activity. Then, o ame de because of rain, because of this downpour. Watashi wa ryoko ni ikena katta. I could not go for my trip because of rain, because it was raining heavily. Then jishin de, because of earthquake, I could not go for my trip, maybe abroad, maybe visit someone, maybe just going home. So jishin de, watashi wa ryoko ni ikemasen deshita. Now, using they to ask someone for permission or just making a simple inquiry like maybe asking someone can I do this or uh, should I put this together in this bag as was there in our conversation. So, they is used for inquiry. Isho ni irete i desu ka? This is what you want to ask. So, should I put it together and isho de yoroshi desu ka? Isho de, basically meaning isho ni irete yoroshi desu ka? Isho de yoroshi desu ka? Shall I put it together? Shall I tie it together? Zenbu isho de yoroshi desu ka? Zenbu is all, all things together. De yoroshi desu ka? Is it all right if I put everything in one bag or ryoho isho de yoroshi desu ka? Ryoho is both, both isho de yoroshi desu ka? So, something related to this was there in your kaiwa in lesson 10. Read that and I am sure you will be able to understand these sentences. Zembu is all and ryoho is both. We have something with Ryoho over here for you, both or both sides. So, watashi wa kohi to kocha ryoho ga suki desu. I like both. So, today we will just do both over here for you and the other part we can take up later. Watashi wa kohi to kocha ryoho ga suki desu. And there is a small mistake over here. Kohi. There is a long sound here. So, kohi to Kocha ryoho ga suki desu. Then a small conversation, Mira and Rao. So they are at the shop. Dono shatsu ga ii desu ka? Dono again shatsu. Which of the two is 
better or maybe three shirts are there. So, dono shatsu ga ii desu ka? Ryoho kirei desu. So, when he says ryoho, it means there are two. So, ryoho kirei desu. Both are good. Both are looking very nice. Ja, ryoho kaimasu. I will buy both. There's another one. Okasan, watashi wa ryoho kaitai desu. So maybe she has two things over here, maybe shoes, maybe shirts, maybe a dress or maybe, maybe something else. So, okasan, watashi wa ryoho kaitai. I want to buy both. So, ryoho wa kawanai desu. So, okasan is very, very clear and she says, I am not going to buy both. Ryoho wa kawa nai or kai masen, kai masen. So she has very clearly told her daughter that no, I am not going to buy both. Now there is another interrogative word, do. It's an adverb, means how or in what manner something is done. So do is used for suggestion or for asking opinion. So, kodomo tachi wa dou desu ka? Asking a question, how are your kids? Which is the first question you would ask your friend if you meet him after some time. So, kocha wa dou desu ka? How is the kocha? So, basically meaning is how. Now, for dou, the polite word is ikaga. Ikaga desu ka? So, basically when you ask someone about something like kocha or maybe something else then for for basically eating or drinking then ikaga is used or you want to know someone's opinion then ikaga is used kocha wa dou desu ka kocha wa ikaga desu ka ikaga is very polite now shiken wa dou deshita ka how was your test shigoto wa dou shimasu ka so maybe you are going on a holiday and your uh, colleague is asking you, what are you going to do about your work? So, shigoto wa do shimasu ka? What are you going to do? So, over here, the meaning is what? Here, the meaning is how? Then, kono kanji wa do yomimasu ka? How are you going to read this kanji? Kono kanji, this kanji, this specific kanji which I am showing. Do shimashita ka? What has happened? What has happened? Is everything all right? Are you okay? What has happened? Any of these can be used depending on the context. Do shite nihongo o benkyo shite imasu ka? Now do shite over here, though it's coming from do, the verb suru is used. So do why? The meaning is why. Why are you learning Japanese? Doshite nihongo o benkyo shite imasu ka? Why are you learning Japanese? Then another example is Doshite ikimasu ka? Why are you going? Or what is the reason you are going over there? Doshite. Doshite is coming from here with the verb suru. Meaning is quite similar. Now as I do similar looking kanjis, so this is she and we did a word in our lesson today and this is nani. Now you can see they are very similar. I want you to find the word with both these kanjis. They are similar looking and for us foreigners very, very confusing. Now there is this vocabulary. You can go over the vocabulary. Remember the words. There are some new verbs. Remember those, use them in conversation. So well, with this I would like to um, finish our class here. There are a lot of things that uh, you have learnt today, a lot of new um, kotowaza and new kanji with a number of uh, question words. So, 
practice those at home with your partner, ask and answer and try to um, practice the kanjis that we have done today and uh, come prepared for your next class. Till then, mata aimashou.